Ruth, any question for me? Yeah, how do I um, avoid my hair falling out? What's your podcast? The Coach HP Show. <laughs> I love it. What's up, everybody? It's your coach. Welcome to the number one positivity podcast on the internet right now, the Coach HP Show. This man wow. right here. When you want to know you're special is if you speak any other language, but they refer to you in Spanish. So we could be saying, no, bro, who do I got on the show today? Enrique Santos. You don't go Enrique Santos. You go Enrique Santos. You have earned that, my friend. Enrique, everybody, and I mean everybody that I asked that I'm doing you on the show today, right? Uh, my barber, Chris, everybody. I mention your name and they smile. <laughs> Everybody gets happy, dude. Have you always had that impact on people? Are you aware that you have that impact on people now? Thank you, coach. Happy to be here with you. Finally, and you've been after me for, for a while. Man, I, um, uh, I love hearing that. I love hearing that I have a positive impact on, on people, that I help uh, you know, make people's days happier. And that's something that I learned early on in my career. Somebody that heard me doing all my crazy stuff when I first started radio, it was a little different. And, um, you know, I left a very disciplined prof profession, which was law enforcement as a police officer. And then all of a sudden, you know, I got into broadcasting and it, it was really more of a, it was it's a whole different world, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, I remember one of the first pieces of advice I got from uh, now a dear friend, Emilio Estefan. And Emilio told me, you know, Enriquito, use that microphone to do good. There's so many people that try to divide us as Latinos, right? Um, so use that to bring our people together. And that's something that I always filter all my decisions and everything that I say and do through that filter. It's funny, bro, because I see you and you represent almost indirectly or unconsciously so much. And you are almost like a neutral voice that everybody's like, what does Enrique think or whatever, whether you're an artist or you're a politician or you're whatever. Like you're a guy that people almost go for counsel, I'm assuming, right? Is that true? Because you seem like a real, like, trustworthy, like, like whatever you stand for, you stand for, you know? Thank you. I try to be very uh, transparent. I, 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 I don't like preaching to people. Nobody likes to know it all. So it comes with a very uh, great, I have a great sense of responsibility and, um, to, you know, to, to my audience and to my followers on social media now. And yes, it, you know, I, I recognize that what I say and what I do has a big impact on a lot of people. Um, Again, nobody likes to be preached to. I like giving people the tools and, and sh you know, I, I tell, I like people giving the tools and let them make an informed decision on what they want to do with their life. But it's amazing on the, the, the how, how people rely on, you know, what do you think? Uh, they want to know what I think. I try not to think about it too much because the more you think about it, it's, it's, it's really overwhelming. Right, right. You know, you can just lead by example. And that's who I am. And I tell people, I never tell people what to do. I don't think none of us like being told what to do, especially in, in, in a world right now where everybody thinks that they got everything figured out and everyone has something to say, which is not a good, bad thing. I think that's a good thing. But uh, yeah, I don't like preaching to people. I tell people, hey, this is why I'm, this is how I think. I'm not telling you have to think the same way, of course, or this is how, when it, came, when it comes to politics, right? This is how I'm voting. I would never tell you who not to vote for or who to vote for. This is why I'm voting for because of, Right, right, this, right, 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 right. Uh, or, or that, or, or the other. But yeah, it's uh, we, we've it's to a point right now where a lot of people have lost their heads. Um, you know, I remember a, as a kid, it was cool that uh, people were like, you know, uh, we were all Americans, right? And everybody, the the main thing was to get out, get registered to vote, and and now it just seems like if you're not part of one party, or you're part of the other. Uh, some people assume that we're enemies and we have to hate each other. That's and that's crazy. not the way, that's, that's not crazy. the way democracy works, right? Yeah, yeah. Democracy is about uh, figuring people's problems out and together we figure out what's best for the majority and for the country. Both, we're both Cuban. I'm Cuban also, right? I was, bo I was <laughs> born in Cuba, but are you a Chicago guy, yes. right? Talk to me about that because I always say there's nothing like being Cuban away yeah. from Miami. Like, because <laughs> we're all Cuban here, so your stock rises, right? right? How was that growing up? Your English is very clean, so it's not like let, I have a regional Miami accent, who yeah. is <laughs> but yours is like on point, right? How was that Chicago thing for you? Well, first of all, your Spanish is known this out there. <laughs> your Spanish is very Miami, which is cool, too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I was born, yes, in Chicago. My parents are Cuban. Uh, I was born in this country because this awesome country opened its arms to my refugee uh, par parents and grandparents that were fleeing, of, of course, oppression and, and socialism, communism, the Castro, Castro Comunismo, 
So uh, I'm blessed to have been born here. All my friends and primos and all of us spoke English. And I speak Spanish only because at home, mom and dad said, aquí en esta casa vas a hablar español. When you, outside of that door, you can speak all the English you want. But here at home, you're going to speak in Spanish. Claro. And I'm grateful to that for them because because of that, I am truly, you know, bi bilingual. If not, I wouldn't. My Spanish would, I, my Spanish would not be the part. Yeah, of yeah on, no, on it's Spanish on point. Radio. No, and you're, and yeah. you know, so I'm very grateful to that. Well, I, I, I heard the story that you called, you used to call in a radio show, and that's yeah. how you got your start, right? Yep. Your voice is amazing. Like your voice, like you have that voice. Have did you know that before? Like when you were a cop, did you like, oh, you have tremendo hockey, or did that just like because talent pushed you to that? Thank you for that. You know, I've never. People, I, I get people tell me that, no, you have a tremendous radio voice. I never really studied uh, radio as a kid. All I ever wanted to do was become a police officer. My uncle was a state trooper. I, I became a police explorer. After I became a police explorer right out of high school, I mm -hmm. became a police dispatcher. From there, I went to the police academy. I became a cop. I always liked radio, and I liked entertainment and comedy, but I never envisioned making a career out of it. And one day, working as a police officer, I picked up the phone and called the radio station that I listened to. I wanted to know the name of a certain album. The guy that picked up was the program director. We became friends. That turned into like an internship. He needed somebody on the weekends, overnights, to do, to do radio. He asked me if I'd be interested. I said, sure. He put me on. He liked what he heard. I liked what I did. Man. And the rest is history. From what was there, the album? What was the album? Do you remember? It was Tonio Rosario. Uh, it was actually an album. Uh, he has a song that he sings, uh, the Ero Ramazotti. No puede haber. Otra como tú se llama la canción. I say my song, Otra como tú. And then uh, how ironic that then, you know, after that, um, the morning show that worked at that time, I was hosting like the best of the morning show. I went from working overnight to then hosting the best of the morning show. Right. And I started doing prank calls, which I've been doing since I was a little kid also. Uh, so it just f fell in place. They, you know, the morning show that was on at that moment left. And the only person that knew the runnings and the operations of the morning show was me. They asked me then if I would, you know, accept the role to anchor the morning show mm -hmm. and, and leave police work. And, th and, and that's, that's what happened. I left the full-time police work to do full-time radio. And then months later... I'm interviewing Tonio Rosario, the guy that, crazy, that I bro. called about the album that, that led to the crazy. So everything in life is full of opportunities, and we just got to be open to it and uh, and be persistent too. A lot of people lose faith or they lose um, energy and kind of give up on things. Um, I, I I'm I'm blessed that you know I wasn't uh, not, no problem with people cannot say in cuna de oro like they say you know that are born into into wealth or or that have a, a different status. I'm very thankful that, uh, you know, my parents were uh, medium income uh, family, but always provided exactly what, what I need, what I, what I need, what my brother and I needed growing up here in this country. But I never had anything handed to me. Everything right. that I have, I've had to, I've worked for myself. I've knocked on the doors. I've made the phone calls, you know. Uh, I've done the hours. I've gotten up at whatever time and been there and had... Do you Go still remember that? Do you still now? Obviously, you're in the other way, right? Yeah. Do you still think about that every once in a while? Oh, do you like, day. oh, bro, I used to, you, oh, I used to, I used to be two hours on a plane. Yeah. Do you remember those days still? I do, and 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 I put it into practice now in in, in my new role and capacity that I'm here now with 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 iHeartMedia, because I put myself in people's shoes. I you know I can identify with people and their and their struggles. Uh, I, you know I can also look at people and. and and see how some people just think that things are owed to them right, or right, that things right, come right. easy and, the, and that they happen on, on their own and they don't. You have to work for what you want. You mentioned parents, right? So one of your superpowers, I think, bro, is your sense of humor. That thing's out of control. You have like this great sense of humor, right? Who does that come from? Because I saw a podcast, a whole podcast with you and your mom, Mercy. Yes. Super cool. She's chill. Like you see that relationship there, right? Does that come from her, the sense of humor? Does it come from Pops? Who, who do you get that from? I think it comes from, from both of them. Uh, both my parents are, are real honest. Uh, sincere, bien tranquilo, and, and transparent and spontaneous. Uh, but I think the, most of the 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 part, the comedy part, probably comes from my comes definitely comes from my father and his father, my grandfather, um, which have always been into jokes and you know and and light up a room when they walk in and always have something funny uh, or witty to say. So I'm Coach HP mm -hmm. Hector Peñata, right? Yep. You have a podcast now called HP Hijo y Padre, right? right? 
with pops with my dad so talk to me about that it, the talk before porque yeah. forget about the show eso <laughs> antes oye papi mira yeah. este programa did you lele like a tia did you excited? talk to me about that production meeting well listen no it was very simple so my dad anytime my dad comes on the show frequently on my radio program and anytime he's on people write to me all the time oh you should have your dad on more often porque viejo, porque he's, viejo. and he's he's great we have different Uh, you know, we don't agree on everything, but we respect each other's mm -hmm. opinions. And it wasn't until recently, it, it, you know, my dad is like, no, como tú quieras, tú me invita, whenever you want, invite me and I'll be on the show. And I, see, I said, well, why don't we just do a show with dad? So now we're going to have a weekly podcast that we just started, eh, El HP Podcast, El Hijo Padre Podcast. So that's awesome. With my dad, where we talk about all different types of things. I, uh, my dad prepared me for everything in life, Enrique, except to deal with him. I'm the biggest. In what sense? I'm the biggest failure in the history of Miami baseball by far, okay? My dad used to beat the shit out of me. When I did, when I failed, dude, the guy would, like, fuck me up. Like, Are you kidding? Hor like, horribly. And everybody knew what was happening. My mom, like, he was famous for that, right? But he had such good teachings also that made me an adversity king. Like, I'm right now, I, I see, I, I, I almost got traumatized, but in the reverse. Like, I just see positivity everywhere. All, that's all I see is, like, opportunity, right? But a lot of people don't have that. I envy and I love to glamorize and give a lot of love to parents that keep to the opportunity to hang with their kids in their 30s, 40s. Because that's not very common now. You know, usually it's, oh, yeah, bill me, fuck that guy, whatever. But your dad did something special there, right? What did he do, Enrique, that you're like, bro, this is why I love my dad, man? Well, very similar. I'm sorry that you went through that. It sounds traumatizing. Yeah, it sucks. How's but your relationship with your dad now? Bro, I haven't spoken to him because the guy doesn't want to change, bro. I haven't spoken to him in four years, and I don't hold no grudges against anybody, you know? But the problem is I got a family now, and if you don't get in line with yeah. the thing, you, I, I can't put my you family... You have other responsibilities. Yeah, of course, man. Yeah, and you got It's like you got to be loyal to my family that I'm starting. And, claro. and it sucks because I a lot of things that, that got him to push away is things that he taught me that he did. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So it's all now. Empathy for everybody. My dad's the youngest of 15 kids, mm -hmm. got stuck in a comunismo, came here, super smart guy, whatever. But I became a people person because of him. Right. Because I was always dodging him. Like I always la vuelta because I knew right. Animal Leo was going to come out there, you know? Hmm. So I got gifted in that way. Your old man, what does he have that you're like, bro, this is why I fucking love this guy? My dad is just, he's a sweetheart. He's probably one of the sweetest people in, in, on the face of the earth. And he's just very. Just very genuine, very transparent. Sometimes I gotta tell him, Dad, and it's it's that generation too, right? Where he's like, No, this is uh, it's gotta be done this way. Muy cabezón, very hard. Right, right. Um, so we you know we discuss that all the time. Like, Dad, just let it go. If someone cuts a, cuts him off, or si alguien no le da la razón, and someone doesn't give him the reason when he feels that he's he's right and they're wrong, he holds that. You know, he hangs on to that and he can't let that go. But listen, my dad, I remember as a kid, also very similar experience to you. Not as traumatic. My dad only hit me once in my lifetime, and I'll tell you what happened with that. But I was a little leaguer too. My dad wanted me to, you know, to be a, a baseball player, but I would, I, I caught way too many balls with my eye and instead of the glove. <laughs> keep your eye on the ball. Keep your eye on the ball. And then boom, it hit me. I kept my eye on the ball. It just didn't never made the glove. So my dad wanted me, wanted me to be a pelotero, wanted me to be uh, into baseball, and he very early saw that I sucked at baseball and I wasn't going to be a baseball player, and he accepted that. Uh, but my dad is very, you know, and sometimes he apologizes. No, and I could have been a better dad. And my mom, too. I could have been a better mother. I'm like, cut that out. I was your firstborn. You guys were young. Kids right. don't come with an owner's manual. You know what I mean? So you're supposed to fuck up as parents. Uh, as long as your intentions are good and, you, and, and, you know, you're, and you're thinking with your filtering everything through your heart and you right. want the best for your kids. And I want to think that the majority of parents want the best for their For their, for their kids. I escaped, I escaped. I got lost one day and uh, I was gone for like hours and my parents were trying to find me. Chicago and we or my friends. This actually was in Oklahoma where my brother was born and they couldn't, they couldn't find me for hours and I lost track of time and I don't know how old I was, uh, 10, 11, 9, 10, 8, 9, 10, 11, something like that. And uh, finally made it back to the house And and uh, my dad said, you know, your mother and I were worried sick about you, and you're in trouble, and you, 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 how could you just disappear like that? And I, he said some things, and I got mad, and I, I never forget. I called my dad the devil. You're the devil, because he grounded me. In English or in Spanish? I, that was in English. You're the devil. 
Oh, you the, I'm the devil? I'm going to show you the devil now. And off came the belt. Mm -hmm. And dad went to show me the devil. <laughs> <laughs> and his hand slipped and he hit me with the con la with the belt oh, buckle in no. the eye. Boom. Oh. Immediately big you know, black eye. I was like, oh my God. And my dad fell to his knees, he was crying. I'm so sorry. That thing slipped. I fucked up. I you know, never hit you, you know, again in my life. And that's that was like I learned my lesson. I deserved it. I you know, I called my dad the devil and I disappeared. They were very worried. I deserved uh getting a good uh Getting a good, getting a good belt, but his hand slipped and the thing hit me in the eye. You talked about parenting there. Yeah. Have you? Do you think about you being a parent? I've thought about it. You know what? Um, but I, 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 the situation I'm in right, not the situation, my circumstances right now just require so much of my my time. I'm pulled in so many uh, different uh, directions that I think it would be kind of. Do you see it in the future though? I say kind of egoita. But do you see it in the future? Well, I'm getting older, and uh, people say, you "Are know, you still young, dude?" Yeah, but you know, it's, you know, if you're gonna, I want to be a young parent too. If, right, I, right, if right. I decide to be a, a parent, my point is, and my filter is that if if I choose to be a parent, I want to make sure that I'm there for him or for her, and it's not a thing where I'm pawning him off to my parents that makes sense. That or makes finding sense. having to find someone else to That's to true. do to do my That's work. True. I feel that like I need to be ready for that role, and I think that right now at this moment, I'm. Uh, so pressed for time and being pulled in so many different directions, I don't think I would be be able to, to dedicate the time that that it takes that 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 baby that new human would require. Would require question. So I get a ton of DMs from parents, uh, a lot of different situations, a lot of them bully situations. Right? I got one this week that I'm going to speak to a kid, baseball player locally, mixed race. Mom is a uh, black Haitian. Okay. Dad is Puerto Rican, and the kid, his teammates just. All of a sudden, decided to brutalize him and called it the kid the N word and slave and caught like really, really bad, bad stuff. The parents didn't know. A, the kid got home from there. I hate my skin color. I threw his glove in the thing. I hate baseball. I hate everything, right? And the parents just reached out to me to speak to the kid. I have an idea what I'm going to say, right? But you, being a guy that has sat down with people of all ethnicities and of all things, of super successful stars and local heroes and stuff like that, man, what advice would you tell? That what comes to your head? I know it could be a lot of pressure, but a 12-year-old kid, what would you wow. sit down and tell him? Well, first of all, uh, great work that, that you know that that you do in in helping people in these in these circumstances. 12 years old, I mean, a 12-year-old nowadays has, for the most part, I think, pretty pretty thick skin, where you're able to sit with him or her and and being able to to teach them what's up. And it sucks, be right, because you lose your innocence, and as a kid, you think that everyone is just just like you, and you don't see any difference in skin color, or in, you don't see money, or you don't see these stupid issues that, as adults, um, we do we do see. Um, man, what could you tell a twelve year old that's being bullied and that's being called the N word? That I mean, that's just crazy. Besides pointing out all the you know, not just successful people, but the diversity that exists in the world, especially in a community like ours. I'm, I assume this person is in South Florida, yeah, yeah, yeah. and it's ridiculous that in 2023 there's somebody that still thinks that way. I think kids or young people don't realize the sacrifices or don't don't actually cons don't actually mean what they say. They just say maybe things because it's repeated, and they don't realize. You hit it on the nose. You know the weight of the what they're saying. And, and this is why, this is why I think you're. Our, if if we were gonna name a, uh, a guy to represent the Miami community, I would pick you, and I'll tell you why. A, you wouldn't want to do it, so that's why you're the right guy for the job. <laughs> B, it's like being a parent. You said the right thing. You're like, man, I would be selfish. Or yeah. this and that. Everything is parenting. Yeah. The parent, when the parent confronted the parent, the parent goes, oh, I've been talking like that my whole life. I've used the N word before. Oh, da, 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 da. There you have it. And there you have it. Sure. Right. So that's why your answer is perfect, bro. I want to talk about Cuba, and I, and I had this for, for so long, right? So I was born in Cuba. I consider myself very Cuban, but I'm not up to date with Cuba and stuff like that. I received a lot of heat because on my social platforms, when the Padre Vida thing started, I didn't post anything about mm -hmm. it, right? And I wanted to get your opinion because I almost feel, Enrique, that if, that if I post something about them like a fraud because I'm not doing anything about it. I could be here now, Padre Vida, oh, we're tagging it, cool, Padre Vida, vamos And I felt like a fraud, and that's why I don't do it, right? Yeah. You, on the other hand, you have people that listen to you on that thing. Right. So every, I, I think, ironically, I think I heard about it because I was following you on social. Oh, Enrique said about it, whatever, right? right? What do you think about that, bro? Because I know Cuba is so touchy, and like to me personally, it's almost like, dude, if I want something done, yeah. 
I don't want the United States. I'm going to do it myself. Right? Right. And I feel that the, a lot of the country has that, you know, whereas the generations before or yeah. before people left, you know, so I feel some fraudness in that in myself. And with my audience, I don't like to be like, hey, mira right. politico, you right, know, right, right, right. when it's like the bandwagon, you know. But I know this is something you're very passionate about, man. So what, what do you think about that? Well, first of all, I don't think you should be posting or doing anything in life because you're being influenced or pressured by anybody. Right. And that happens a lot these days. A lot of people, oh yeah, if you if you post, then oh, you know, you're a jerk because this is, why do you think that way? And if you don't post, right. like in your right, case, right. oh, you're an asshole because you don't care. That's not necessarily the case. You're just trying to be uh, respectful in the fact that if you're not living that moment and that's not what you're into, you don't want to offend anybody or why get involved in something like that. Listen, with Cuba is extremely controversial. It's extremely, it sucks, right? And unless you've felt the oppression firsthand or unless, you know, you had a, a, a father or a brother or sister that was sent to a firing squad or that's been, uh, it's a political prisoner and it's been jailed for simply just suggesting a, a change in Cuba. Dude, my wife's, my wife's grandfather yeah. did 20 years. It's very real. And so the years. exile community, yeah, yeah. you know, how can I tell my dad that had to pick up and pick his shit up? And, oh, us too, us too. My dad was 15 when my grandfather had to send them you know, out of Cuba, through Spain, he knew absolutely nobody. That's how we went, through and, Spain. and then eventually came to the United States, through so Spain, same thing. Yeah, to Madrid. Meet up by school. And then my dad, and then ends up in Nicaragua, and then had to leave. So my dad had, my dad and grandfather had to leave, and my, my family had to leave Cuba because of communism, and then had to leave Nicaragua, where they went, also because of Los, Los Sandinistas. So that's, it's, it's a very suffered generation. They actually lived it, so you can't bullshit them. So that those wounds are very real. And um, th listen, yes, it's very touchy. It's very controversial. You don't know who to trust, right? right? Because unfortunately, Cuba has sent shit here. And, right. if, and when I say shit, I mean spies and right, you know, right, people right, right, right. that are right. And you don't know who's who. And you see YouTubers that, uh, that they say that they want, uh, you know, liberty for Cuba. But all they do here is put our people up against each other. So it's very, it's, it's, it's tiresome, cansa. Uh, the way I look at it, my point of view is, and it más que comprobado, it's been more than proven. Communism sucks. That's right. Uh, communism and socialism, it does, does not function. You know, we're blessed to be in this country, which, you know, the United States, we are the, we are the pillar of, of, of democracy. We have problems just like any other country. Absolutely. But we're blessed to be here. So, you know, that's all I know. I was born here. Right, you know, right, So right. I grew up on the Constitution and the Pledge of Allegiance. Right. Um, when it comes to Cuba, again, very touchy. 13, 13 presidencies have no, been, uh, have come and gone uh, in and out of the White House since Fidel Castro Talking about lied, Fidel his Castro. Way in wait, wait. In, wait, lied, lied his way in in 59. Let me tell Fidel Castro. So the most gangster move ever, ever done in the history of radio yeah. is when you prank them, yeah. right? That's the most gangster move. That move, <laughs> that should be in the Radio Hall of Fame. Okay, every year we should celebrate. Right. When is that day? Do you know what day it is in the I year? Do you remember? remember? What it was, no, it was Dude, uh, 2003, I believe it was, but I forget what day it was. It goes to show, okay, when you got through that, you were like, oh, I'm in, yeah. right? What were you feeling? Did you get nervous? Talk to we, me about that, bro. We weren't thinking. It was just like, you know, we prank called Hugo Chavez, and then we also prank called uh, Fidel Castro, and that basically put me and my, my, my team and I on, you know, on the map as far as... Uh, Pranksters, radio, radio uh, pranksters. That was very on at the beginning of my career, right? Because uh, I started in full time radio in, in two thousand. That was early on, like two thousand two, two thousand uh, and three. But it felt it felt great at that moment. We weren't thinking because we were just again. I just brand new onto it. This sounds like a great idea, even though it was really a crazy one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but we got through and we and and we did it. And again, it put us on 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 the map. But still today, I listen to that call and I hear and I still don't believe it. It's so. It's it's incredible, really. I'm not afraid. Que 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 Bro, a couple more. We we do. We got like ten minutes. We good? We're time? good, man. Good? Yeah. Have you ever thought of as I watch you? Because when I do these interviews, I study the person. I'm like, whoa, Enrique can do this, can do that. Have you ever thought of doing stand up comedy? I did for a while. I tanked. I was at the Improv in in Miami. People were like, what? the? For how long did you do it for? Stage. I think almost people. Almost for how long did you do it? It was an for? open mic night, you know, and I said, oh, "Fuck it, I'm gonna get up here and see what I, what I can do." My problem, honestly, is is retention. Like my, I, I have my, I'm here with you, and I'm already thinking that you know what I got to do in 10 minutes and 15 right, minutes, right, right. and then after that, what am I doing? So I, I'm working on that. I've gotten a lot better about living in the present. In the present. But again, with so many different things pulling for your, for your attention, I don't know. It's hard for me. Again, the retention part is. 
to stay on stage, to stay on stage, and to stay on point, and have a little story, right, and like right, that, whatever, right. whatever. Like right? if it's imp improvising and speaking with yeah. other people, I, I, that that vibe I like a lot. Which better. you can because you could do crowd work. You could, like a guy that. like you can literally go up there and do it. You could you could have a bit. Oh, let me tell right. a story real quick about me and my own man. We started a podcast, right. and the guy <laughs> took over. <laughs> I'm going to fire my dad. He doesn't know it yet. Da -da -da. And then crowd work. Oh, yeah, any right. questions? Oh, yeah, because you have that. Yeah. That's number one. And number two, singing. Yeah. You, you have, you can sing. You're one of the few dudes that have the radio voice, <laughs> but you can sing, bro. Have you thought about doing anything like that? Yeah, yeah. And as a, thanks for that. Maybe one day uh, here soon we'll get inspired. If I have some time, we can do some stand-up. It's good therapy too. Singing, I always, I, you know, I love music, of course, and uh, parodies is a lot of fun. So always like, you know, fucking people's music up and putting like we're listening in the song yeah. and on the radio in the car, and the like, song comes on, and I'll I'll be changing the words all the time. Uh, I do it with Mark to all his music. So Mark has all his, his worldwide hits, and we we have most of them. Almost actually the whole album of all Mark's music, songs. Yeah. All, you know, with, with dirty <laughs> and words and funny stuff. I did it with uh, Magic. With Nasri that was, nice. was in a couple days ago with nice. his, uh, with Rude. Why you gotta be so rude? We did a song yeah. about the, uh, about the eggs. Nice. Being so, about the egg price. The eggs oh, are, yeah. That was yeah, high. Egg, eggs are very expensive eggs right Eggs are now. very expensive. <laughs> you, that you've interviewed all these artists, right? They all love you, man. Like, they're like, it's almost like, oh, we're boys. They fuck around with you, whatever, whatever, right? Why is that, man? Is that the longevity of the career you've had that you, you were boys with them when they started 10 years ago? Is that your personality? A little bit of both? What do you see that, man? It's a combination of all going back to when I told you about Emilio and about using, you know, my platforms to do positive and bringing people together. And, you know, I've created a friendship with, with a, lot, a lot of these artists. Um, although... Part of the show, we deal with, with gossip, you know, what Latin show right, does it, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. But we do it with respect, you know, right. and a lot, I think uh, I've, I've gained the trust of a lot of artists where they know I'm, I'm, my intentions aren't to, you know, put their dirt out there or depress them uh, to, uh, you know, to speak on things that are going to make them uncomfortable. So uh, we make it a, a, it's a friend zone. It's a, it's a fun right. time. Uh, when when they come to my show or when they're they're on with me and any one of my platforms. Favorite person that has interviewed you or you interviewed with? Who was your hero growing up? Now that you've put this together, man, there's so many you know people that I've in, I've interviewed um, that that are that are memorable. But also when people have interviewed me, you know, of course having uh, wow, uh, having John McCain on the show was big. Nice um, uh, interviewing you know President uh, uh, Obama. Uh, Celia Cruz, rest, nice. rest in peace. But I think one of the most memorable, and I and I tell this story uh, not too often, but when people have asked me about people that I've interviewed, I always take it back to someone who decided to interview uh, me that I felt was still mind-boggling, Larry King, may you rest in peace. So my team got a request all of a sudden out of left field that Larry King wanted to interview me. And I was like, oh, shit. Like, Larry King is, like, the man when it comes to, you know, radio and, and, and TV. He's such a, a pioneer, and he opened up so many uh, different doors for us and with, with his style. Right. Uh, you know, from the beginning, when he started radio, ironically, in Miami, and then went on to do all the stuff that is, you know, historical interviews that he did, including his long-running show on, on CNN. Uh, and even retired, he was still doing podcasting and right, video right, podcasting. Right, right. And almost till the day of, of, of his death. So, in, you know, being interviewed by Larry King, that was, I think, to me, was, uh, it was, it's, um, it was special. So you don't know this. So Larry was like a dad to me. I, really? uh, I trained his two kids in Beverly Hills. Uh, if you Google me, there's going to be a lot of not good news about <laughs> that situation for a specific reason. But it wasn't because of Larry. But he was like my dad. And I lived with him for a year, pretty much. Really? And uh, I learned... This from him, he would tell me, he goes, listen, my first time on the radio, his real name is uh, Larry Zeiger. And he gets the show, super young here in Miami, and it was too Jewish the name. So the program director pulls up the yellow pages and goes, King's Liquor. So on Africa, he goes, you're Larry King. Get oh, out of here. Swear to God. So he comes. And he gets on the microphone first. He goes, all weekend I prepared my intro, I had my song, blah, 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 whatever, whatever. He sits there. The music comes in. Monday morning, first guy there. She puts the music, whatever. Nothing comes out. 
was so nervous, nothing came out. Spritz it again, blah, blah, the whole thing, blah, blah, puts it on, nothing comes out. The third time, the program director rushes in and goes, you're paid to communicate, communicate. And he goes like this. I want to he apologize goes, to you guys today because I'm very nervous. Today. This is my first time on the radio. All right, guys. But if you stay this with me, Larry King I promise to you this I'll morning, get better. I Here we go. Just bang, got bang, bang, three bang, days bang. ago. The best, man. Jesus. The best. What dude, can we learn from that? Just being yourself. No, we're not perfect. So that's why and what you say. you got a perfect radio voice. I've never studied this. I don't do anything to change my voice. I'm just myself, you know. And I think that uh, as long as we work on just being ourselves, it comes at a high expense, right? Because we, you know, it, that I have to peel back the layers and be very vulnerable sometimes. And sometimes being too honest. Um, you, you put yourself in a very vulnerable position. I'm going to give you one more story of him sure. before we go. You're going to like this Of one. course. So, in a table at a house, uh, Jackie Gleason used to have a bunch of people over. The top medicine guy. Almost like if you say, you take all of Joe Rogan's best guests. Yes. And he puts them there. The top neurosurgeon, uh -huh. the top uh, thinker, philosopher, blah, blah, whatever, whatever. Right. And they would go around the table. And everybody would say, he goes, you know what? Say something that'll never happen. So like I said, I'll come and I'll go, oh, yeah, I'm like, HP, I'll never grow my hair again. And I'll be oh, and, <laughs> and when it got to Larry, he goes, listen, I'm Larry King. I have a show in Miami. Frank Sinatra is the biggest star in the world. Frank Sinatra will never do my show. Jackie Gleason, who you used to love to do, says Jackie Gleason at his heyday, you know, he goes, you got him, pal. He's like, what? He goes, you got him, pal. This and this time, Frank will be at your show. Whatever. He's like, are you sure? Like, pal, I said you had him. He goes, he calls the show. And this is like when Frank Sinatra was like put together, Elvis, Justin Bieber, Michael Jordan, like the guy, you know. And he comes and he calls the radio station. And the radio station started to do advertisement and this and that, blah, 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 blah. Day of the show. Everybody's waiting outside. Larry's nervous. He's like, hey, he'll be there at 9 o'clock. 9, 10. He doesn't show up. He calls Jackie. Jackie's not here. He goes, pal, didn't I say you had him? You have him. 9, 20, a limousine comes out. The door opens. Frank Sinatra walks out. Who's Larry King? He goes, me. They walk right to the thing. They get there. And true to Larry's words, he goes, I always ask people what I felt. All right, Frank, you're the biggest star in the world. Why are you here? <laughs> Just like that. And Jackie goes, listen. I mean, and Frank goes, listen. Five years ago, I was playing in New York. And I, did, and I got laryngitis. And my second show, which was sold out, I couldn't do. So I had to phone in a friend, a big favor to Jackie Gleason. And Jackie goes to me, listen, I'm going to do this for you, but one day I'm going to call on a favor and you have to show up. Wow. And this is the favor right there, bro. <laughs> That's amazing. So take a look at that, man. Really cool. Dude, I am, I'm such, I'm so happy we did this. I'm so happy you gave me the time, bro. I just... I, I, I feel like I know you without knowing you, and, I, and that's not like bullshit. I'll say it to a lot of people, but I'm so happy for your success and everything, man. Question for me before I let you go. Anything I can help you with? Any question for me? Yeah. How do I um, avoid my hair falling out? Dude, a guy like you with the face you have and the good facial hair, <laughs> well, you're going to have to do two things, right? Because look, I got the scar okay. back here, right? So I did that way back when. Mm -hmm. Right now, you do two choices. Either you go to, a lot of dudes are going to Turkey right. right now, and they're putting it because before, and I talk about this so much with people. Embrace the you, right? So you're a guy, if you want to keep it, and it's giving you, I don't, I don't know how you deal with your hair thing, right? But if you're like, oh, you don't want to lose, it does me, whatever, then I will go to Turkey. It's like, it's, it's literally 2000 super cheap, and you do the one procedure, and you're good. Or you ride it out, and then you do what I do, and listen, you'll be the happiest, most positive bald guy in the world. And you cheer everybody on and you do that. Well, I'm actually already bald. This is actually a wig. It's a wig? You. Oh, let's see. You. Let's see the whole thing. <laughs> <laughs> Coach, thank you so much for the invite. Congratulations for your, uh, with, with your success and how you're inspiring and helping others. Awesome, thank awesome. You for having me. This is cool. Where, uh, where can they find you? I know you're everywhere real quick. I know you got like 17 uh, gonna, shows. You can Give find me here in my radio studio, always working or at home sleeping. There it is. <laughs> no, Enrique Santos on all my uh, social media. Perfect. Boom. Thank you, Coach. Amazing. Appreciate you. Thank you. You're the man.